While most students are on vacation, more than 600 teacher trainees have spent their summer in Tulsa learning. They're preparing for a big educational challenge. Two years of teaching students in low income schools across the United States. Some of the next generation of teachers will serve in Oklahoma classrooms come fall as part of Teach for America's effort to improve education and student achievement. Once you get your paper, go ahead and put your name on it. Deborah Feinberg from Charlotte, North Carolina, is among 630 teachers from across the United States who have been training for the last month in Tulsa. The city was chosen this year to be one of nine regional Teach for America summer institutes. It's absolutely huge that, that we ended up being only the ninth city in America to land a summer institute. We are the first city outside of a major metropolitan area for Teach for America to go to. Tulsa School Superintendent Keith Ballard is a champion of Teach for America and persuaded the organization to bring Teach for America core members to serve as instructors in Tulsa Public Schools in 2009. Last year, Oklahoma City also got on board with Teach for America, placing 50 teachers in classes there. We recruit teachers who are willing to commit to teach specifically in low income environments um, to ensure that all kids get the opportunity to have a really positive experience in education. Laura Brewer is the Senior Managing Director of the Tulsa Teach for America Institute. It's her job to keep things running smoothly and at a brisk pace at Lewis and Clark Elementary and eight other Teach for America summer school program sites in the city. There is just a fierce energy for wanting to make this four-week summer school program really rigorous and really joyful. Veteran Tulsa Public School teachers oversee the classroom instruction and are constant coaches of the core members who faced fierce competition to be accepted into the program. There are about 50,000 individuals across the country who applied to Teach for America this past year and we only selected 5,800 of them. Lance Tackett is the regional director for Teach for America Oklahoma. He says the application and rigorous interview process takes about two months. I think what's unique about our selection model is that it's based on leadership. We're looking for people who have had a track record of success, both in their academic careers and other leadership endeavors they've taken on. We're also looking for people who have immense perseverance. It also takes immense endurance to complete the institute. The teachers in training board buses to their school sites around 6.30 a.m. They are with their students from 7.30 in the morning until 12.45 p.m. each day. There are few and short breaks. The children even eat lunch in the classrooms. And during that time, teachers keep them engaged in thinking. One-on-one -on -one instruction can be found in the hallways. They assessed the progress of these kids every single day. It is the most intense environment that you have seen. They assessed them every day and adjusted instruction. Now, while I wouldn't want that kind of intensity during the school year, I want that kind of intensity uh, in the summer. Ballard says having the institute here allowed Tulsa Public Schools to do something extraordinary. Here's what it means. Last year, we had 1,300 kids in a summer school program a pretty good summer school program. This year we had 5,300 kids in a summer school program. Once the children finish their intense classes for the day, the Teach for America trainees escort them to waiting buses and take a quick break. Then they sit down for three and a half hours of professional development classes. During their training, core members learn they won't be working a 40-hour week once they are a full-fledged teacher. We very much train our teachers to believe in every child no matter what, to work with families and parents authentically. You don't just have parents come around once a year during a teacher conference, right? We need to be visiting our parents at home where they go to work and actually building real relationships. The core members leave the school sites and buses around 4.30 and arrive back at their dorm rooms at the University of Tulsa around 5. But their day is still not done. In the evening, they meet with teacher coaches to discuss their teaching methods and to prepare lesson plans for the next day. It's a 16-hour-a-day routine, but their energy in the classroom remains high. Now we're going to walk through this word problem real quick. So I need someone, I'm going to call on someone to read this out loud for me. 
Joe Shashelsky from Buffalo, New York, says his enthusiasm keeps building because of what he gets back from the students he's teaching. At first they came in very quiet, very timid, kind of afraid to get involved. And just through what we've been doing and trying to foster in our classrooms this summer, it's like they caught their excitement. They're like hooked now. Joe will be teaching at an Oklahoma City school in just a few weeks. So I want us to think in our brains what we learned about this morning. Angelina Molina is also assigned to an Oklahoma City school for the next year. She graduated from the prestigious University of California, Berkeley. But Angelina did not come from a prestigious background. She came from a low-income family. Angelina hopes she can instill in her students what an education has done for her. Giving them the confidence you know, society might not say that you have a lot of money, but we say that that doesn't really matter in the end. And that as long as you have a quality education, you can definitely reach whatever goals you want to do or, and know that college is an option for you. It's an, it's an option for everyone. It's because of Oklahoma's low national school ranking that she wanted to teach here. So Oklahoma is a very high needs region and that was very important to me because I really wanted to make sure that I was having an impact and you know that, uh, I could really in, invest myself fully in a state and an area that you know needed help and wanted help. Teach for America is developing a model to track its teachers' success in Oklahoma classrooms. Anecdotal evidence suggests that it's working. Tackett points to one teacher's achievements as indicative. You know, she taught at McLean High School, where unfortunately a number of the students who were going there were about 30% you know, 40% proficient on some of their math end of year assessments. Um, but in her class, basically she had a group of students who about 95% actually scored advanced um, within the course of a year. The Teach for America training during the five-week institute is just the beginning for the core members. But it continues through their two-year commitment. There's a lot of professional development and training, and our teachers are held to the same No Child Left Behind standards as all teachers. We aren't trying to be a teacher supplier. It's like our mission is actually to recruit the future leaders and enlist them in this movement to eradicate inequities um, that exist in our education system. So all of our training, all of our work, all of our ongoing support is focused on working with kids growing up in low-income communities. The teachers in training will soon be heading to classrooms in low-income schools in Kansas City, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Miami, Florida. 150 of them will be working in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Liz Exon produced this story, and Liz, the teachers, as you said, make a two-year commitment to teach at a low-income school, but how many of them will opt to stay teaching in Oklahoma after that? According to Dr. Ballard, so far about 50% of the Teach for America teachers stay on with TPS. So the numbers are growing, especially in Tulsa, since about 75 new teachers have been added to the payroll each year since 2009. We'll have to see if that trend upholds in Oklahoma City, which has recently partnered with Teach for America. The teachers there have uh, not yet completed their two-year commitment stick. Some TFA critics have said these young teachers are displacing older teachers at a time when job security is tenuous due to school budget cuts, is there any merit to that argument? Ballard says no. He says even with the loss of uh, some, many teaching positions over the last three years due to budget cuts, they always have attrition. Each year, he says, TPS loses about 300 teachers to retirement for other reasons, and they need a pipeline of new teachers to replace them. And uh, Teach for America is not their only source. Uh, TPS is also fully engaged with OSU and Northeastern State University to get graduating students there with education ma majors to seek jobs in Tulsa. What is Teach for America's long-term goal? Well, as we heard a little bit from the regional director, he told me Teach for America is not so much about providing teachers, but it's about creating generations of education leaders, individuals who are committed to improving education opportunities for the poor, so that if the teachers end up in the private sector or even in our politics, improving educational opportunities will always be at the core of their life goals. Dick? Liz Exon, thanks for that report. Thank you.